Thanks to That Game Company for sponsoring this video. Hi, this is Ariel. Bonjour. Welcome to my channel where we make fun costumes and weird stuff. I hope you enjoyed the last video where I made a sky outfit because that game company has asked me for another one. So today we're making another costume from the video game Sky Children of the Light and their event Season of Aurora. If you don't know this game, it's a very pretty and cozy game that you can play solo or with friends on Switch, on smartphone and on PlayStation. You fly around in the clouds, you go on adventures, you discover the stories of the light spirits and it's free to play with no ads and no paywall. The whole season of Aurora our event is taking place right now until the 2nd of January with a lot of her music in the game and also there is a concert that you can go with thousands of other people. It is a very nice experience. Anyways, it's getting cold and also they have added snow in the game so I thought of doing an outfit that would be a sort of winter fairy with the combinations of cosmetic items from the game that they made inspired by the singer. I mean Aurora is basically the goddess of winter so I think it is perfect for this season. So we have this ensemble inspired by the runaway music video, this magical crown, and of course we need wings to fly like a fairy. And maybe let's make those light up. So let's get to work! You can learn more about Sky by clicking the link in my description. Oh. I wanted to make the crown in resin. Here are all my silicone molds. Unfortunately, the moon one was way too big, but I thought I would improvise using these. If you remember, they were like the leftover resin I had from my Sailor Moon accessories. I made a lot of those little glitter charms. And this was not to waste the last few drops of resin. But now it's time to use those. Okay, so I did some testing. This is working absolutely great. <laughs> Forget the hat, I'm walking with the window open and it's cold. So I've tried this mold and I think it looks great. This resin is absolutely an amazing product. I've made this in like four minutes. I poured some resin in this mold and when it was not completely cured, I bent it and then I put a few drops on the table and stuck it on top of it and now it's like a, a figurine. I think UV resin is my new favorite thing. I also tried stacking all those little glitter pieces together to make sure that the previous resin and the UV resin work together and yes, it works absolutely fine. It's very strong, it doesn't move and I can assemble all these little traps together into the shape that I want. I'm really excited. This is amazing. Not sponsored, it's awesome, but also it is very, very toxic, okay? Please be careful. First, let's trace a moon in the right size. Then some non-stick cooking paper. Then we can assemble all those pieces in the right shape with a few drops of UV resin in the back. Well, if you don't know, UV resin needs UV light to cure. That's what this little lamp is. I think it's also used doing uh, like artistic nails. It's super practical, it's easy to use, but also be careful. Please don't look directly into it with your naked eyes. That can cause some serious damage. And also the curing process is the moment where you have all the fumes coming out of the resin. So make sure you use a respirator with the right filter on it. But after that, you can just let the shapes guide you. Also break a few of them so they are the right size to fill in the little gaps. And the whole shape can be taken off the paper, it just unsticks very easily. It's still a bit thin and fragile, so I'm going to add a few pieces on the other side. And also you can see that the resin is not completely clear on the side of the paper, it's a bit cloudy. But it will be clear again when I add a little bit on top of that. And I do the second moon to make sure that it is similar to the first one. It's such a quick process and I'm so glad to use finally those little glitter scraps.
for the three little stars on top of the head, I can use the mold. I don't want holes in those star shapes, so I'm removing these little things. And the UV resin can be added directly into those molds. I'm using any scraps that is a bit pointy to make sure that the resin goes into the little corners of the star. These uh, sculpting silicone tools are very useful because the resin won't stick to it and it can be removed easily when the resin is cured. No need to sacrifice a paintbrush. Let's add some sparkle. and cure the resin with the UV light. Another note with the curing process, it gets really hot. So make sure you are not holding the mold with your bare hands at that moment. And the most satisfying part is just popping the pieces out of the mold. Oh yeah. And now since they have glitter in them, they are not completely clear. So it's good to give it a, a little more UV light on both sides to make sure that all the parts are very cured and strong. The thin edges can be trimmed with a knife because I did make a little a bit of a mess when I was mixing the glitter, but it cuts easily, so it's fine. Also curing the resin on the tool so I can peel it off. I'm adding a little bit of decoration on each of those little stars so they match the big moons. To attach the stars, I need them to have a little bit of a base. For that, I'm using the mold upside down. This circle is not the perfect shape, but I will use it for now. How cool is this technique? You can turn basically anything into a little figurine. I'm just so ecstatic about this new technique. <laughs> now with those delicate little things, let's go to the next step. Just drilling some sewing holes into the base. Then I realized that the circles were maybe a bit too big. They might be too visible on the head, so I'm just chopping them off with some pliers and sanding those edges clean. And then to attach them on my head, I'm using this pretty gold trim, reinforcing it with some twill tape and adding an elastic. And now assemble everything by sewing the stars and moon to the headband. I'm also adding those little comb clips that you can sew on. They are very cheap, I put them on headpieces, hats, everything that you have to put on your hair. For the outfit, I'm using this viscose cotton blend. I like the color and it's very drapey. I use a basic pants pattern for reference, but I want this to be super flowy with all the fabric that I have. So I put the front and back very far apart and the center space will be pleated. And hopefully this will give a lot of volume to the pants. I'm arranging the pleats on the side of the hips. It doesn't have to be very precise, but I just have to make sure that they are symmetrical on each side. Measuring with the ruler will do the trick. The waistband will be just a straight piece. Here I'm using scraps of interfacing to make it stronger, but I remember that this interfacing is just crap. So I switched to the black one. It doesn't matter anyway, this won't be visible. Fusible interfacing is used to make sure that your fabric is a bit sturdier, especially with this one, which is very light and flowy. And also, interfacing is filled with glue, so if you use it, make sure to have a little scrap of fabric to protect your iron. I've searched the edge of the quatch seam before attaching the waistband, but I don't know if I will ever master the tension of the serger if someone knows how to do it. The waistband is pinned in place to those pleats. I found this invisible zipper in my stash that I picked from somewhere. I guess the color is close enough. These pants don't have side seams, so I'm going to add the zipper at the front. 
and try to make it invisible because it's, it's an invisible zipper. To make sure that your zipper is invisible, it's nice to use an invisible foot. These foot attachments are especially made for invisible zippers. Those little channels under it will hold the zipper in place so you can sew as close as possible to the teeth of the zipper without obstructing them. And after a good press, it should look like any other seam. The edges of the waistband are folded, sewn and clipped and the edge can be closed up. You fold and pin it and transfer the pins on the outside. Then a little stitch in the ditch. Go slow and make sure that you are really careful to stay in that line so it stays invisible. A simple hem and a hook at the top of the zipper and we have some finished pants. Let's make a quick top. It's very simple, so I'll just drape it right there on the mannequin. To attach the wings in the back without them being too visible, I'm going to leave open a long slit in the back. I can adjust those simple pieces and use them to cut a second set. Then assemble them at the front and sides, serging the edges. Adjusting the pleats at the front and then to make the neckline, I just measure my head to make sure that I can fit into this shirt. With the leftover fabric, I cut a few strips in the bias when you cut the fabric like this, in diagonal, it gives you a little bit of stretch that you can use to fit curved edges, like my neckline. Also adding a tiny piece of trim at the center back to give this area a little bit more strength. Cutting up the extra fabric at the bottom and hemming it. And I forgot to film how I finished the armhole, but they are folded twice and hemmed. Also there is this little scarf thing, but I will make it more like a choker. This is a design choice, not at all because I don't have any more fabric. There is a lot of flying in this game, so let's just make some wings. The support structure will be done using some gardening wire. This can be found for cheap at the hardware store. The set will be four wings with uh, two big ones and two small ones. I'm kind of improvising the shape, just making sure that it's basically a butterfly or a moth. But I'm adding an extra loop for the big ones so they have enough support. The wire makes it easy to connect everything at the center, while also having a support for the straps and also the electronics. It's good that I have my glasses because I almost stabbed my eyes a few times. I add some duct tape here and there, but not too much because I want to cover everything in fabric so I can sew it and the glue of the tape might get my sewing needles sticky. There, we have some butterfly structure. Still adding some duct tape in a few places to make sure that I keep the pointy ends of the wire from stabbing me. I want to wrap everything in fabric. That way I can sew the fiber optic fabric to the structure and also it will hide the green color. I don't have enough white ribbon for this, so I'm using this. This is like a tube for inserting bones, but I don't use it, so let's just rip it open. Then we wrap everything tightly around the wire. Of course, I realized that I don't have enough of this material, so I just had to take it off. Try another technique that didn't work. But I found some old trim thing that might do the trick too. It's less fluffy, but it's white and it works. All the ends can be connected and secured by sewing them. I added four pieces of trim so I can attach this to my body. I thought about doing some kind of harness with buckles, but it was much lighter than expected. So I just ended up tying those ribbons around my body underneath my clothes. Now back to the never-ending supply of fiber optic. I have a deep dive explanation video on how this fabric works. I can link it somewhere. But these are the connectors for the LED lights. Here I'm cutting the fabric, making sure that I don't cut any of the fibers. It's a bit tricky. So we have five connections on each side. I will need to divide this for the four wings. I'm going to cut in the middle here and then here. So I have three for the big wing and two for the small wing should be enough. Mm -hmm. 
to keep the fiber optic from escaping, I'm just securing the edges with a zigzag stitch. And I have to keep this straight edge intact, so I'm going to gather it to give the shape of the wing. And then it's just a lot of fiddling around to make sure that the wing looks pretty, but also that the connection can be tucked away. And I can hand sew the fiber optic to the structure. Repeat this process for all the wings, while making sure that the pleating looks cute. Also, my string of LED lights is 11 lights, so I thought I would add one extra connector in the center and add a long flowing ribbon. I think it matches the vibe of the game, and it reminds me of Journey. I split this long strip into three parts, so I can wrap it around the wire and hide some ugly parts. I connect the lights in the right order, because that helps with the gradient effect. And now we need to hide all this mess. I'm using this fabric, which is made for curtains, and it's completely blocking the light which is perfect to hide all the connectors. I'm basically making a little pocket that I can access to change the lights and the battery. Now we just need to trim the wings into a butterfly shape. The fiber optic is kind of a stiff fabric, so I'm cutting it bigger than the structure. That way, the end of the wing can have a, a little bit more movement than the wire can allow. I think it makes them more like a living thing. And uh, we are done with the costume. Subscribe!